delivering a resounding no to the government. The organisers of Sunday's march in Rome say 30,000 people turned out just a week before the crucial referendum. I'm not against changes, but I'm in favour of changes that increase democracy, not that take us to a darkness that's harder to come back from. We don't trust Renzi's government that makes laws against the lower class, like the Jobs Act, which took away workers' rights. On Saturday, Prime Minister Matteo Renzi told a gathering in Rome that the vote was about creating a more effective political system in Italy. The current constitution guarantees equal powers for both houses of parliament, often leading to legislative gridlock. Renzi's plan is to cut the number of senators from 315 to 100 and reduce their powers. We all know that from the 5th of December there could be either a stronger, more solid country capable of dealing with European and international challenges, or there could be a blocked country. The Prime Minister says he'll resign if he loses the vote, so the referendums become largely about Renzi himself, and the latest poll suggests the No campaign has a clear lead. One of its figureheads is Beppe Grillo, leader of the Five Star Movement, who held his own rally in Rome at the weekend. We have to take out our No sword and hit them in the face with it. Our No is not a political No, it is the No of every individual. It is an existential No, a social No. A no vote could eventually see a new government, including Grillo, who advocates leaving the Eurozone. For this political analyst, the implications are huge. If the no wins, the effect in Europe will be quite strong because we've seen the Brexit, we've seen... Now we are in a period of general elections in France, in Germany, and in, in, in Spain, stability has been achieved despite many, many uh, months of instability. So it will be somehow the, the uh, beginning of a new turmoil. Matteo Renzi may have managed to get his reforms through Parliament, but now it looks like the referendum could force him out of power. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera.